hello youtube welcome back to my channel my name is neo this is a new video i will preface this by saying this is gonna be a long one but it'll so be worth it so perfect and just a great way to get set for fall and fall nails um i've been scrolling through my instagram and all i'm seeing are halloween nails and i'm like oh boy here we go um summer is definitely over but we're in the fall season so i guess it's time that we all kind of just transition into the new vibe with nails so this client has been on my channel before um but she didn't come in with a set from me she came in with a previous set from a different um tech so we did take that down um and we're just getting started with new prep so i sprayed her with my alcohol like i normally do pushed her cuticles back and we're just starting with some basic prep so going in with my diamond skiver bit and cleaning up any dead or sticky cuticle that might be on the nail plate. I am not pressing super hard. I don't have the speed up super, super high. You know, if you watch my videos, it's the same pretty much all the time. Um, and I'm trying to keep the skiver bit as flat as possible to not cause rings of fire for this client. Now I'm going in with my Young Nails coarse sanding band on my mandrel bit and I am just buffing the natural nail, removing any excess cuticle and evening out the surface as lightly as possible. You don't want to apply a super amount of pressure when doing this. You will damage the nail plate or dig into it too much. You might even cause like heat spikes for your client and that's really uncomfortable if you ever experienced that. So just giving it a light buffing so that whatever enhancement we apply to the nail has something to stick to. You want to just have a little bit of a coarse texture. So because this client has a little bit of a coarser um, cuticle sidewall skin area, I'm just going in with this diamond ball bit and I'm just kind of buffing all of the dry skin that I'm seeing on on the um, and around the nail. Basically, um, I don't really go in with nippers or cuticle cutters or scissors or things like that really often unless it's like something really extreme where I have to like remove it. Um, I like to go in with this ball bit because it just helps to kind of buff or sand down that dry skin so that we have a really beautiful appearance to the nails. And this client really appreciated it. She was just kind of like, you know, when I go to regular shops, they don't do this or if you ask for it, they kind of give you a hard time. But um, I really, really love that. So, you know, for her, I did it. Just using it. I do turn up the speed a little bit as well. This is not something that you do at a very slow speed. To sand that dead skin down, you want the speed to be about medium, a little bit closer to a higher speed. And it's only going on that dry skin. It's not painful. Um, and it just kind of sands it away for the most part to give a nice smooth appearance to that skin around the nail.
this client is a fan of a tapered square and a super super long length so obviously i love her for that i'm using these um 3xl uh tapered square no c curve i'm trying to like remember what the nails are called but they're by zule um love them they come in a bag though that's really annoying um but you can definitely buy tip um tip cases like on amazon i have seen them and i did add some to my cart because fishing through the bags of like this is size zero this is size one is like such a hassle um versus having them in a tip box so if you purchased any um nails that come in a bag like that just go to amazon and buy like a clear i think it's i looked up like clear um nail tip case empty um and then you'll find them you can get them for like two for nine bucks or like four for like 15 or anything like that so yep just applying these tips a little bit of glue um i do not use the wells for the most part i try to just apply the tip to the very very tip of the free edge you're gonna see on one of the nails i think during the shaping process that it comes off but that's just because i apply it to the very very tip of the nail it does have a half well so if you are someone who enjoys that more than welcome to just apply it all the way down to the half well um so she what i normally do in terms of length is i usually do one hand completely which is their right hand um i have them move around or tap their phone to see if it's comfortable for them the length and then once happy then i use it as a guide to measure for the second hand so i'm using my straight edge clippers and matching the cuticle up with the other hand and we're just going to clip i always try to also clip a little bit slightly longer than um, the other hand just so that when we're filing or anything um then it comes down to being even also when clients are like oh make my nails these length or this length or whatever i always go slightly longer because of the filing process i do like to go heavy in the filing especially on the free edge um, just to get like a super sharp shape and it always comes up shorter than um, when you started so that is something to consider as well but we're just making sure that they're nice and even for the most part here before we go in for shaping So I'm taking the same mandrel bit and sanding band and we're just going to blend these tips just lightly also because when I apply tips sometimes glue gets on that natural nail that we have already buffed and the enhancement isn't going to want to stick to that smooth shiny glue so I'm just roughing that up and mainly you can see I'm focusing the sanding band on that smile line of the tip just to give it a nice blend so that we have a smooth transition from the tip to the natural nail.
time for prep. I'm going in with my Mia Secret Dehydrator Primer, and then I'm gonna go in, I believe I went in with the um, Not Polish Triple X Bond. I like to use two different primers. It just works for me. Do whatever works for you. So if you watch a lot of my videos, you already know what I'm about to do. We are going in with our clear base of acrylic. I love doing this for so many, so many reasons. It really just helps to give me a smooth foundation to the nail. It one, protects the primer because like this client was a very, very fidgety client. If you have fidgety clients and you go ahead and prime the nails, I would just say slap on some clear acrylic so that they can move around and you don't have to worry about getting dust on your primer or having to like refile and reprime the nails. Um, just for me in general, I like to do it so that when clients come back for removal I have a visual guide as to where to stop filing um, also it just helps to protect that natural nail so you know when to stop and it helps to protect the tip because if you want to change acrylic colors if you apply a colored acrylic directly on the tip and say they come back and want a glass tip then it's gonna be very difficult and or you're probably gonna have to replace the tip which adds length to your um, services so there's so many benefits to doing it I personally just love doing it it's rare that I don't um, but for the most part we're just applying a thin watery coat of clear acrylic just making sure to cover the entire natural nail all the way down the tip um, the length of the tip all the way to that length and the free edge beautiful beautiful length um, I really love that she gets these uber long nails because I I feel like all my my long girls are slowly getting shorter and shorter and I'm like where are the long girls at so I love this client because she's fearless and she's just like let's go let's do the length you know but yes we are just applying a nice thin coat of clear acrylic to all of these nails Once that's done, we can get to the fun stuff. So this set completely came from her. Um, she was ready for the fall time vibes and I, I'm not gonna lie, she was my first fall client. So I'm just kind of like, oh man, I really gotta get into the fall mindset. I was really still thinking like summer and bright and like fun and whatever, but this is fall. She was showing me some reference photos and I kind of was like, let's do it. We changed up the colors a bit, but basically this is going to be a acrylic, I said a, an acrylic um, French set. So I'm doing the reverse French method where you kind of build up the natural nail bed area and then fill in backwards with the acrylic for the French part. Um, so every single nail is going to get this process. This was a very, very long service just because it just takes so much time to kind of do this. And we did a different color on every finger. Some of the colors were custom mixes so it just took a lot but it was a labor of love and I think they came out so fabulous especially for the first set for fall so as you see I am just using um, this acrylic to build up this nail plate color this color is a fave you've seen it on my channel before many many times this is eggnog by sugar and cream it is a really really gorgeous color so it's a really beautiful kind of soft peachy pink nail plate nude um, but it has this really really fine like super super fine silver shimmer to it that you can only see I guess like in person really really gorgeous and it's a glow-in-the-dark and when I say this thing glows it glows this crazy bright green you would never even guess but sugar and cream has some really really beautiful 
um, nudes and beautiful glow colors. So this is like a two in one. So as you see, I am using multiple beads to do this. I did on her other hand, um, one bead, some of the nails, but I just felt like I didn't have as much control. And as you saw, I'm able to um, just build up better and smoother um, nail plate um, area for this reverse French with multiple beads. So don't feel like you have to be able to do it in one, do it in as many as, as you feel necessary. I'm also building up the structure here because I will not be clear capping these nails, which is different. This is my first time I think actually doing reverse French and not clear capping because I always kind of feel like um, I need to build up additional structure, but I'm not this time, which is also why it took really, really long. I was like, let me focus really hard on building up these nail plate areas. And as you see, it was really nice. Another thing that I really love about this reverse French or that I try to focus on is building up a long almondy shape. And we actually talked about this during the service. She didn't, um, she didn't actually uh, say this to me when I was doing it. I personally just like to build up a long kind of almondy narrow kind of nail bed shape. I know some people when they do reverse French, it's more of a broader kind of rounder shape. And I just think that it kind of stunts the length and the beauty of the nail when doing a french in general i try to always do a long almondy kind of shape and when i what i mean by that is you see her natural free edge is more like a blunt kind of round shape and i'm dragging it down so that it's kind of like an almond and i just think it elongates the nail it makes it look really really elegant and i'm trying to taper it so like it's like a cone kind of at the top i don't know how to describe it but basically i'm giving her an almond shape versus a round shape for the nail plate and i just think it's really really pretty um just using my brush to kind of push but as you see i'm pushing and swiping away at the tip um, of the um, nail plate area with the tip of my brush and just kind of molding it and then once you get this bead kind of where you want it to be don't forget to also make it straight because there's nothing worse than doing all this beautiful um, reverse French nail plate action and then it's crooked right um, so always just try to you know look down the whole length I always talk about looking down the knuckles of the nail of the, the finger versus just looking down the fingertip because most of us have crooked fingers like honestly you know and that always works for me so just making sure that it's a nice straight almond shape and then going in around that cuticle area and um, blending down building up structure like I mentioned because we will not be clear capping these nails so you can just check this out I'm gonna do this process on all ten fingers even though I'm only showing you one hand but we did this on every single finger oh yeah
so after um finishing that we see we got this beautiful beautiful shape and even at this point she was just like man i love an almond nail and i was like girl this is so pretty look we were talking about the shape and i was telling her how the almond looks so gorgeous and just I, I just love whenever you do an almond nail and it's a nude i talk about it all the time it's just so gorgeous something so classy about it but at this stage we were just getting really excited so once doing that nail plate area i try to just make sure it's nice and sharp i'm going in with my nail file and it's a little bit difficult because it's raised up just a tiny bit off the tip so i'm just trying to clean up the shape and make it nice and sharp so that when we go in with our french acrylic color it has a nice sharp shape to kind of butt up again so then when you go in with your filing it's a perfect french so it does take time reverse french is a lengthy process um so if you're a beginner nail tech um, I would just say um, to consider that um, in your um, pricing and in your timing when you're telling your clients like how long something might take. Also, just consider painting it because we we uh, had already mixed all these beautiful colors and all that stuff. And then halfway through the surface, I was like, girl, we really could have just painted this. Um, and we had a good laugh about it. But, you know, it was a process and I'm glad that I got this, you know, practice working on reverse French. But like, yeah, we definitely could have just painted it. But, you know, we're shaping it up with the hand file right now. Alrighty, so I mentioned in the beginning of the video that we were going fall and that every single nail was going to have a different color. So the color scheme is super unique and fun and pretty, but I think it was so apt and just came out so gorgeous. So this first color is kind of like a brownie nude, so it's a little bit deeper than a nude color. This is actually Perfect Nude from Kara Sky, and I love this color. It is, at least on my skin tone, it is legit like a perfect nude color. Love it. Um, I will say though, like working with it, and you might see it in the video, um, that I think the pigment in it or whatever, however they're formulating um, the acrylics, and this happens to me for a few of my Kiara Sky products actually, I think it's not blended or I guess ground down as fine as possible because you're gonna see like streaks of brown and streaks of black 
dragging down the length of the nail as I'm working with this product. Um, I just think that the color is gorgeous, but maybe it's not mixed extremely fine, um, that I'm getting chunks of a particular pigment um, that kind of streak the, the product as I'm working with it. And I was just mildly annoyed by that because then I had to go in with additional beads to kind of cover that up. But for the most part, I am just giving the nails, as you can see, it's a very, there you go, you see that black smudge right there? It was happening a lot with this product and it happens a lot with other um, Kiara Sky um, acrylics that I have. So that's one thing that I will say to keep an eye out for, especially if you're working on something where you can't really file off. Um, you know, it's just annoying to have to work through and, you know, try to cover up flaws with the product, with the product, you know what I mean? Um, but it did happen a lot. I did notice that on the thumbs. So on the thumb where both thumbs were actually doing this dark brown nude color. And I'm trying to build up as much structure as possible. So you see me patting, patting, patting. I'm trying to basically, we're not clear capping. So I got to fill up the rest of the nail and give the structure that's needed for this length, which is a pretty significant length. Um, so that the nail is nice and strong and has the structure that it needs. As always, I am continuously patting, patting, patting my sidewalls and free edge. I do not want to warp the beautiful shape of these tapered square nails. Um, it's just something that I really, really do all the time. I just want to do as little filing as possible, especially with a set like this. Reverse French is so messy and just so, just a mess. You know, you just want to make sure that the, the last thing you have to worry about is reshaping these nails. But yeah, I'm just building up. You see me patting, patting, patting. I'm basically pushing the product in on itself so that we build up structure versus just swiping away at it. I don't want to waste the product because again, I'm not clear capping. I just want to make sure that the nails are nice and thick for the structure, for the length that they um, are at. And also swiping at the sidewall cleaning my free edge just to make sure that it's nice and clean so that when we go into filing I have to do as little bit of work as possible.
And that's pretty much it for the thumb. The next color is a custom mix that I actually made a while ago. I think I made this color last year when I was in my chalk kick of like, oh my God, I can make whatever colors I want. This is kind of like a mustardy yellow and I actually used it on my channel before. So I will link that in the cards. Check that out. It was one of my earlier videos. Um, so I would so appreciate it if you check that one out. I'll link it in the cards for you. But it's a super gorgeous kind of mustardy, kind of green toned um, mustard yellow and I thought it was so cool this is a gorgeous color for fall um, I actually created it using chalks and chalk like pastels that I got from Michaels um, and some clear acrylic I added some shimmer to it and some mica powder so this is I can't even tell you where or how I made this color but definitely look into that if you're a beginner as well in terms of nails and you don't have a huge collection of colors that is something that you can also do make your own colors I know that that was a big thing maybe a few months ago everybody was like making their own colors even me too but this color is next this is going on both of the pointer fingers um, we're kind of doing like I wouldn't call it a, an ombre but it's more like a gradation um, but not really because we just went from like a brown nude to this mustard yellow but you're gonna see towards the end the vibe in terms of like the color change that's happening so we're going from like a warm kind of nude to this mustardy kind of yellow we're going to go into greens and then like a turquoise blue um, but it's just all the gorgeous colors that kind of work for fall we're doing the same thing that I did on the pointer finger just building up structure you see me patting that product I'm not I'm gonna do my best to not swipe away the product because I want it to basically um, give structure to the nail we are not
this next color is another custom mix so this is actually a mix between the mustard yellow that I just used and a color that I got from sugar and cream that's gonna go on the next hand so we couldn't find in my collection a color that would sit well in between so I thought why not just make a color of the two colors so that we have a mix um, and it worked out really great so this is a mix of olive from sugar and cream and that custom mustard color so it's like an extra extra custom color um, and we're gonna be applying it the same way to this middle finger on both hands Next up is Olive from Sugar and Cream, and it is a gorgeous color. I've also used this on my channel. Um, and again, I use this and the mustard color to mix that middle finger green. So it's 
it looks pretty similar but in person it does read more of a grass kind of green and this is more like a deep olive kind of color i will say that this color is beautiful by sugar and cream but this is the most one of the most problematic colors that i've ever used in my life and i've only been doing nails for like a year and a half a year over a little over a year and a half guys this color when i say it was like curry right now i did this set maybe two weeks ago and my nails are my fingers are still stained yellow i don't know what pigment is in this dark green but when i say like some of the dust of the acrylic kind of spilled on the table my white table has been stained yellow her hands were stained yellow my brushes everything like i don't know what pigment they put in this color it's a beautiful color but i have never had an acrylic stain just like the the pigment in the powder even when it's not wet it just stains so badly like she went to wash her hands and yellow was rinsing into the sink i don't know but i'm not gonna lie i threw it away because it was just such a hassle it was so messy um and yeah you can see the other colors are kind of staining that's normal like when you tap your napkin but not to the point where like look at my fingers my fingertips are still yellow like i'm looking at my fingers right now and they're they're stained um and she was like they probably put like actual curry in the acrylic and i was like girl i wouldn't even i wouldn't be surprised with the way that it's behaving right now but maybe i got a bad batch I'm not sure. I have tons and tons of sugar and cream products, but this color in particular, I just had to throw it away because I can't imagine myself using it again and going through all the hassle and mess that it put me through that day. But yes, this is Olive by Sugar and Cream. I would still suggest to try it out. It's a beautiful color. Maybe again, I got a bad batch, but I just, I can't deal with it. Um, but yeah, doing the same application, just building up a structure as much as possible and filling in all the way up the sidewalls. It is a messy process, this reverse French. You have to push that acrylic up all all the way around the sidewalls especially if you did a deep um, nail plate like I do with the French that kind of goes all the way up the sidewalls you want to just make sure that there is structure and acrylic there you don't want the nail to not have what it needs there you go you see me pressing that product in that's just me trying to fill in any gaps where that nail plate eggnog color um, didn't reach so that the client doesn't you know break a nail because there's no product kind of holding it sturdy there but yep this is olive on the ring finger using another custom mix color. So this is a mix between olive and a beautiful, beautiful turquoise deep blue that I got from Clawley. Um, Clawley is a brand of acrylics that I recently started getting into and I bought a few and I think I found my favorite sheer nude from them called Skin. I'm dying to use it. I actually filmed a video um, doing this really gorgeous set on myself and when I looked at the video it was not in frame so I did not post it. I deleted it. I was so bummed but I'm looking to redo that set on a client with that color called Skin but I gotta find the right client you know. Um, but yes so this is a turquoise color. A mix of a turquoise from Clawley and the, the olive green. We wanted something that kind of um, mixed or was a little bit close to the other colors. So these are custom colors. I think the only colors that are not custom are the ring finger and the thumb. But for the most part, we just wanted to make sure to bring in that green that we had on the other fingers as well. Beautiful, beautiful. I think this color was my favorite actually in the set. It really just brought in the fall vibes. I was like, yeah, this one is doing it for us. But same process, making sure to build up enough structure and just building up the nail as nicely as possible and keeping it clean. I don't wanna to do too much filing.
so I don't know what happened, but the footage of me actually um, <laughs> removing and cleaning up the nails is missing. But it's basically what I'm doing here. I took out my, not my medium, I'm actually using a coarse um, nail bit and I am just filing away all of that excess um, acrylic from the colored part of the French that I did apply. I'm also going in and cleaning up the sidewall and cuticle area just to make sure that the structure is appropriate. And like I was mentioning, I was applying so much product that I wanted to build up structure you can see when she turns her fingers a little bit that the nails do have the appropriate um, shape and structure for the length that she has that is something that you really need to consider um, when doing reverse French just make sure you build up the nail bed and then follow through with the acrylic color other than that you might have to um, clear cap for structure but I'm just going in and cleaning things up and if you go ahead and file before applying that French color then you're gonna have a nice sharp line like I do there so just doing what I can to clean up the shape and um, smooth out the nails as much as possible like I normally do After e-filing, I always like to e-file first and then hand file second. And as you saw, the shapes of the nails were pretty maintained. So all I'm doing is just making them uber, uber sharp. Oops. Um, always be careful. As you can see, I'm using my ring and pinky finger to kind of brace the nail. These are a little bit longer as well. You don't want the client to have to go through the wobble. So oftentimes the client will be like, ow, but mostly it's because I'm squeezing so hard. I do not want them to have an ow situation because I pulled their nail bed by filing wildly. So I prefer to squeeze. Um, the nail as you can see there I'm squeezing really hard on that nail plate area and then using my file up and down on that free edge to get a nice sharp shape so that's what I was talking about earlier in terms of clipping the nail slightly longer than they want just a smidge maybe like a, a millimeter longer than they want because I like to go in in this up and down you're gonna see me do it real soon in this up and down motion on the free edge to get a nice sharp shape and in that right here I usually lose a bit of length when doing that so that's just what I do you do whatever works for you
going in with a quick buff on the nails and under the nails I like to do this because one it helps to smooth out any scratches that might be on the nail it gives it a nice really smooth texture but that has a little bit of texture which is great for um, gel polish application which we will be doing a little bit of and it helps to remove any product that might be on the skin and underneath the nail I always try to buff underneath the nails as well it just softens up the bottom so that clients aren't more prone to scratching themselves just something that I like to do So I did have the client wash her hands and even at this point the yellow from that olive color was still rinsing out into the sink I have no idea I don't even know if you're gonna be able to see it but um, my brush that I'm using here my manicure brush was even stained yellow I was just like man what is in this product I do not know um, but it is a problem but we're just cleaning her up getting her set for some gel application so this set is going to be matte. I'm actually gonna start by top coating her now because we're gonna add some texture and I just wanted to make sure that the nails were already finished. We are going matte with the texture. So I'm going in with matte by Not Polish. And at this point, the nails look gorgeous, like just beautiful, but it is the texture that kind of takes it to the next level. So just giving her a nice coating of this matte top coat. Don't forget to clean your sidewalls and free edge and then have the client cure for 60 seconds to lock it down. So to add texture, I basically took similarly colored um, gel polishes that were similar to, um, what you call it, the acrylic color that I used. And we're just drawing these, I don't even know what to call it, they're just like horizontal lines. And I'm going to stagger the center lines from the side lines um, up around anywhere where that green or colored acrylic is set. Um, and then before curing, as you can see, I've got the custom color down below and a little scoop. It's not a scoop. What is that called? A metal pusher, but it's basically a scoop. And I did line my table with napkins because I was like, I'm not getting that green color on my table again. Um, and once 
once you're done with the design do not cure you're basically going to pour the acrylic on top of that wet gel it will take some time you want the the acrylic to kind of soak into the gel so don't just do like a light pour really really let the product kind of set into that gel and it's really gorgeous the color of the gel does not have to be spot on just a general kind of color I think you might even be able to use like top coat that might work too because it's clear but I just went and chose like the gel colors that were kind of close um, and then the acrylic just kind of you know matches it tap tap and then have the client cure for a full 30 not 30 I did 60 seconds to lock it down I'm not gonna lie I did use the same olive color um, for both the ring finger and middle finger as you can see it's slightly different one looks a little bit more green I mean more yellow because we did mix in that yellow and then this olive color is the one from sugar and cream so you're gonna see me um, use the same gel color and then use the different colored acrylics to kind of set and uh, add that texture to both nails For this mustard colored nail I just went in with this jelly amber color um, gel polish I'm not gonna lie it was the first one that I saw that I was like yep this looks close enough this is by sugar not sugar and cream this is from eye gel beauty whoops what happened I made a mistake who knows um, but that's the beauty of gel polish I don't even remember what happened but yep just going in maybe I made the line a little crooked or something but yeah the color wasn't perfect but that's you know the beauty of it the acrylic is actually gonna set the the gel you just want to get something that's a little bit close to what you're looking for and again we're just doing staggered lines so like what I mean by staggered is on the side part right here I'm putting lines in between the center lines if that makes sense you'll be able to see it when the texture is there a little bit more um, but yeah just making sure that you're using a good amount of gel you don't want it to be super dry you want it to have like a good amount of gel when you're doing this texture and what would be even cool is like if we did glossy on that since I mattified the nails before doing this and then what if I just left it glossy like that like that would be cool too so you would have like a tone on tone situation but we went matte on matte with the texture and as you can see I'm giving it a really really generous pouring so that the acrylic really sets into that gel product before curing. last is the thumb and you're really gonna get to see um, as you can see the gel polish is not even like close um, but it's totally fine I think this is a really cool Kiara sky color um, called nude swings and I was like yep it's nude I'm gonna use it <laughs> so as you can see I'm using a good amount of that gel polish it's not like super flat either you want it to be a little bit high for the texture effect and that's what I mean by staggering as you can see the lines that I'm drawing there kind of fit in between the lines that I did in the center um, and as I go up towards the um, sidewall area um, just you know trying to make sure that it sits only on that dark brown nude area but same thing once I'm happy with the line work I'm gonna go in with that acrylic color give it a generous coating and then have the client cure for 60 seconds Thank you. 
once done i'm basically um, having the client cure this is what it looked like after you just brush away the excess lots of texture super super cool i love this set it is so great for fall and this is what they actually look like with all the colors super super fun it is a long one thanks for sticking through hopefully you like this one like if you like subscribe for more welcome to fall i'm so excited to get into the fall nails and i'll see you in the next one bye